So this is what you boys think I want for a birthday present, huh? Well, like it says, boss, she's the toast of the Stockton waterfront. Uh-huh. She's really something. Drinks are on us. I sure appreciate this, boys, but I gotta meet Gene's train in a half hour. Well, then, let's get inside, boss. Time's wasting. It's really very thoughtful of you, boys, but... Drinks are on me! Come on! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Want to buy me a drink? I will, if you're Barbary Red, the toast of the Stockton waterfront. She's not. But why don't you buy her a drink anyway? Like the boys said, you're much better than a birthday cake. Happy birthday, cowboy. Mm -hmm. Girls, we're having a birthday party. <laughs> oh, clear the party. Which way? This way. He's a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good fellow. That's all what he can deny. Send in a round of drinks and see that we're not disturbed. We're having a birthday party. Oh, he's hey. a jolly good fellow. He's a jolly good fellow. Why they aren't here yet? Well, maybe the train was late. Shh, here they are. Light the candles. That's one. Oh, oh, I got two. Oh, oh, oh. I better pinch your own side. Where's Nick? I don't know. He wasn't at the station when my train came in. Well, why didn't you wait for him? You were supposed to make sure he got here. Well, I did. I waited an hour. Well, maybe somebody bought him a birthday drink or something. Oh, that's right. The boys were going to buy him a drink. He's probably with them. Well, where'd they go? Oh, it could be any number of places. Well, it's not Nick's fault. After all, he didn't know about the party. If we blame anyone, it should be that, um... What's her name, Heath? Uh... Barbary Red? Nothing gets by you, does it? <laughs> Who's she? Polite ladies wouldn't even mention her name. I'll try and restrain myself in the future. 
Well, I hope Nick can tear himself away soon. You know, I think I'll go into town and find him. Bring him home for a piece of cake anyway. Well, happy birthday, Nick, wherever you are. Sir, this was supposed to be an exciting place. Well, it's still early. What'll it be? Is your boss around? Maybe. Mr. Barclay. Dolly. Dolly, give him whatever he wants. And make sure the glass is clean. Mr. Barclay doesn't like to get his fingers dirty. Uh, I'll have a little cognac, please. If you'll join me. We have three drinks here. Beer, whiskey, and gin. Well, in that case, I'll have whiskey. One whiskey. Always make it a practice to check up on old clients? Uh, now, Barbara, I want to be your friend. Really. It's a little late for that, isn't it? On account of you, I spent 180 days in the house of correction, as they call it. Well, I... Now, there wasn't very much I could do about that, was there? Wasn't there? The judge was an old friend of your family. You could have fixed it up with him. That is not the way. What do you want? All right. I just want you to know that I'm sincerely sorry about the House of Correction. I wish I could have helped you. Do you really think you could have gotten me off? If you were innocent. What difference does it make? You went your way, I went mine. What brings a fancy lawyer like you to a saloon like this? You want me to be honest? You. You know, I've thought about you a great deal since you walked out of my office that day. There were a lot of things we didn't get a chance to say. I just wish we could have gotten to know each other as, well, man and woman, instead of client and counselor. Then when I heard that you were here in Stockton, I... Well, here I am. Get to know one another? How would we do that, Mr. Barkley? First, by calling me Jared, then secondly, by having lunch with me. And then? Well, I wouldn't be much of a lawyer if I told you all my strategy, would I? <laughs> all right, Jared, I'll have lunch with you. Good. But, on two conditions. Name them. Well, we don't talk about my case. That's over. Agreed. You served your sentence. 
And I'm sure you wouldn't be foolish enough to go back into the Shanghai racket, would you? I never admitted I was in the Shanghai business to begin with. Remember? I remember. What's the second condition? I want to pick the place. Anywhere you say. Well, how about the Barclay Ranch? And you can inform your mother that I would like a formal invitation in writing. Well, that is how it's done in your part of town, isn't it? Sometimes. <laughs> Good evening, Jared. sign of him anywhere in town. Keith? It's just a suspicion, but I... I think Nick is being shanghaied. Shanghai? Shh. Mother asleep. She's with OJ. <sighs> Barbary Red was a client of mine in San Francisco. She used to work for a notorious crimp named Jack Thatcher. Crimp? A crimp, Gene, is a man who delivers live bodies to ships that need crews. You think Nick and the men are already on the ship? I don't know. All I know is that Nick isn't here, and the men aren't in the bunkhouse. And Barbary Red once spent six months in jail for enticing men to sea against their will. There's a good chance she's still in the same business. But Stockton, we're just a river port. That doesn't make any difference. They could be short of men, and when that happens, they'll sail with anything they can get. And they never come back with the same crew. What do you mean? He means we may never see Nick again. There are only two ways of escape from those ships. Desertion, which makes it almost impossible to get back, or death at sea. Am I exaggerating, Jared? No. Why are we just standing here? Let's go get the sheriff. Oh, no, Audra. I've seen this happen in San Francisco. I mean, if the sheriff goes to Barbary Red and asks questions, she and her cohorts will get rid of the evidence. I don't understand. Nick, Hap, and the others. They're the only evidence against them. Well, if the law can't help... Then... If Nick isn't back by morning, we'll just have to help ourselves. Heath, you know the Sailor's Paradise Hotel. It's on the waterfront. I know the place. Well, they don't know you, so I want you to check in there in the morning and find out anything you can. Gene, you go to the Harbor Master's office. You get me a complete list of all incoming and outgoing ships. It'll be my job to find out whatever I can from Barbary Red. I've invited her here to lunch tomorrow. She'll come, but only if she gets a written invitation from you. Jared, do we have enough time? I'm not sure we have any time at all. Belay that, mates. 
damage the goods. This way. <laughs> shipment of barrels. You know, they're charging. We'll check it later. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I hope you like cold lobster with a very dry white wine. Pleasure of your company. Luncheon today, Victoria Barclay. And if the cook is in very good form, a chocolate souffle. You're not joking, are you? Jared Barclay rarely jokes. Come on now. You think I'm a crimp. I never called you a crimp. I said think, and that is what you think, isn't it? That's what you thought when you dropped my case. Barbara, I dropped your case because you wanted me to bribe a judge. I said I didn't want to talk about that. Look, I run a waterfront bar. That's not against the law, is it, Counselor? Absolutely not. I'll pick you up at noon. No. I don't want to be picked up. I hate that expression. I'll ride out alone. Alone? I've got my passport, haven't I? Three ships sailing at dawn. All right, now you watch these two. They're bound for the Orient. I tell you, we ought to start at one end of that port and search every ship. Gene, no captain is going to let us aboard a ship with a crew of Shanghai sailors. Well, you're a lawyer. Can't you get the sheriff or, or the judge to issue some kind of search warrant? And take a chance that they dump Nick into the river before we can get to him? Jared, there's another way. Let me go down to Barbary Reds and get myself Shanghai. No, Heath. But at least we'd know where Nick is. The only thing we'd know for sure is that you've both been Shanghai. But you can follow me. Heath, these people are good at this game. They've been at it a long time. You think they're just going to drag you out the front door and make a public announcement? Believe me, we might lose both of you. Now, we may have to take that gamble. But not yet. Just give me a little more time. Jack, why didn't you let me know you were in there? I thought it'd be a pleasant surprise. Well, since when do I have to have an invitation to my own place? out to the cold storage house this morning. There are only three fish on ice. It was a slow night. It was the best I could do. Well, then you're just going to have to try a little harder. I've got three captains waiting on cruise. You've got six other places up and down the river. Are they delivering any better than me? No, but you're special, Red. You always were, ever since the first time I laid eyes on you. 
So where are you going dressed like that? I've been invited to lunch by a prominent local family. <laughs> a prominent local family. What's his name? And during lunch, what are you going to talk about? Oh. <laughs> uh, let's see, the price of a barrel of whiskey, or um, the time that I found you hustling drinks in San Francisco. Ah, oh, Red. Maybe old Jack's not the handsomest man in the world. Or the richest yet. But we haven't done too badly, have we, love? Oh, oh, I got something for you. This will make you forget that prominent local family. What's he got that old Jack can't give you? <laughs> Go ahead, take it out. Well, put it on. Oh, Jack. <laughs> well, well, what's the matter? Don't you like the color? I, I, I could take it, take it back. I like the color. And I don't see how you can expect us to sit and make polite conversation with that woman. That woman, Audra, knows where Nick is. We don't. Well, what do you talk about with somebody like Barbary Red? She's undoubtedly a lot more worried about what she's going to say to you. She's here. driving away. Well, go get her, Jared. Hurry! No, no. No, it won't work here. I can see that. And what are we going to do? Well, if she won't come into our world, I've got to go back to hers. I couldn't make it for lunch. Something came up. Liar. You were afraid to come in the house, weren't you? Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll give you another chance. Have dinner with me. Not at your house. Oh, no, no. We'll go out to the best restaurant in Stockton. You know, I want to prove something to you about where you belong, Barbara. I keep expecting to be thrown out of here any minute. Have them send me back to the saloon where I belong. Barbara, nobody's gonna throw you out of here. You belong here. If you want to. Well, 
people tonight, maybe with you. Just this once for a laugh. I know who I am. I run a saloon. May not be much to you, but I'm not doing so bad. But it is bad. As your friend, I can tell you it's worse than bad. You don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. Now, look, Barbara, I'm not the sheriff. You don't have to pretend with me that it's just a saloon. I've heard otherwise. All right. So a couple of cowboys get themselves licked up and they disappear. So it's my fault, just like San Francisco? A couple of cowboys disappear? I'm saying if. If they disappear. Listen, the waterfront's a tough place. Cowboys, sailors, they get boozed up, I entertain them. If they fall off the dock, they'd better know how to swim. Now tell me, what do you want from me? I want you to feel that the next time you can step out of your carriage, come into my house, and be treated like the beautiful woman you really are. I have to go. Barbara. Now, please. Well, we had a beautiful dinner, a lovely talk. And? Nothing. You're still certain she's involved? Yes. Yes, I am, only... Only what? Oh, nothing. She's a beautiful woman. Isn't she? And you wish she weren't involved in this filthy mess, hmm? Oh, I don't know. All this lying to her, this pretending, I... I can't help but feel dirty about it. They're moving some men to a ship. When? Later, I don't know what ship or where, but I know it'll be tonight. Come on, come on, come on. Anybody ever put up a fight to get out of this place? It won't do you no good, mates. I've been shanghaied twice now, and I never heard of anybody breaking free. The crimps knows their business, or they wouldn't be in it so long. So you just give it all up, right? Give it all up! Signing aboard the schooner Halcyon, bound for Padang through Sunder Strait. A tropical voyage to a South Sea paradise. And you expect us just to sign on, huh? Oh, we can't put you aboard without your signature. Or at least your mark. Why, that would be illegal. <laughs> <laughs> sign the book. Hey. Yeah. Don't be a hero, lad. Sign. The trip will be educational, and the work will make a man of you. Like that? Well, they've learned their lessons well. Like I say, the trip is educational. <laughs> Stand up. Give him his first lesson.
ready to sign now, cowboy? Congratulations, lad. You've signed on under the hardest man that ever commanded a ship. That'd be Bully Bob Waterman. <laughs> you guessed it, lad. <laughs> well, bon voyage. Cruller captain on the seven seas. Twelve lashes from a cat of nine raises 108 welts on a bare back. Bully Bob uses it every single day. I've met the man at a party in my home. You think he'd help us? Well, we're not out to sea yet. Jared. Barbara, I've got something I want to say. Jared, you can't stay. It's been on my mind ever since dinner. It won't keep. Jared, I'm expecting someone. Well, whoever it is will just have to wait. I thought we said good night. That's just the point, Barbara. I wanted to stay good night and not goodbye. You're going to have to make a choice right now, tonight. A choice? A choice between this life here or a life in my part of town. I don't know what you're talking about. Listen to me. I'm asking you to give it up. All of it. And I'm not talking about just the saloon. I mean the crimping. Let me go. The Shanghai, Barbara. And don't bother to lie to me about it. You practically admitted that three cowboys were shanghaied out of this place last night. You're in it up to your neck. Jared, please, you've got to get out of here. I told you I was expecting someone. Give it up, Barbara. You're better than this. Believe me, you are. Walk away. If you don't, there'll never be a chance for us together. And I want that chance. Start tonight. Let those men go now. I can't do that. Then tell me where they are. Well, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Jared Barkley. Jack Thatcher, are you a uh, friend of Red's? The lady and I were just about to leave. Weren't we, Barbara? Oh, were we, Barbara? Pete, Ben! I think you'd better go, Jared. Barbara, this is your last chance. Make the right choice. Shanghai him, Jack, we're through. I mean it, Jack. Dump him in the alley. Here. You're going back to San Francisco with me tonight just as soon as I had Waterman and his crew. Jack, I want to quit. Quit? Huh? By him, that... 
fancy pants, that Barkley, you stupid... What has he been telling you? And what kind of a fool are you to believe him? He's... Barkley. Barkley. That name is familiar. Now, who is he and what is he? Does he know about our operation here? No. Are you sure? Tell me fast, and if you're lying to me, I'm... I'm just trying to make friends in the right part of town. That's what you want me to do, isn't it? Butter up the right people? Well, I pray that you're not lying to me. Barbara. Jared, you went about this all wrong. You should have come to me in the first place. Steve, while we're standing here talking, Nick may be shipped to heaven knows where. That's what I mean, Mrs. Barkley. If you'd come to me My sooner... My son's life is at stake. We did what we thought was best, and we'll do it the same way again. Steve, you're just wasting time. Now, do you still want to go through with it? Steve, for the love of... All right. I said the plan has a chance of working. Now I've got to tell you. I also think Heath has a chance of winding up dead. If it doesn't, I'll take that chance. I'll round up some deputies. This will give you a little head start. Seagoing wolf, and it's my night to howl. No, no, no. Whiskey, whiskey. To the brim. Come on. Fill it up. <coughs> Much blood. Just leave the bottle here. have a likely fish downstairs. Shall we hook him? <laughs> Waterman will take all we bring. He needs a full crew. It ain't water. Oh, it won't be water. Hey, pretty lady, let's dance a little jig here, huh? you have a drink. Is there a place on this train where a fella might lay down? Ah, oh, this way to the sleeping car, mate. <laughs> You 
where I can keep an eye on you. Now's your chance. Good evening, men. I hope you're all well. Captain Waterman, I'm Nick Barkley. Let this man out. I want to talk to him. Most unfortunate, Barclay. All right, now, straighten it out, will you, Captain? Oh, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. Nothing. My men and I were Shanghai. One of them was killed. Ship's articles. Nick Barclay. Is that your signature? We were forced to sign. One man was beaten to death because he didn't. No, that's not true, Captain. They all sign of their own free will. Was someone beaten? No. No man deserted, but I don't think we'll ever see him again. He wouldn't want to face a court-martial for desertion, would he, Captain? Barclay, you're under my command. Your very life for the next two years is in my hands. From now on, you will not speak to me without my prior permission. Is that understood? Lock him up. We sail at dawn. Money's all there, I assure you. I am an honest man. We're all honest, Captain. We stay honest by not trusting anybody. Count that. Hey! Now, just where do you think you're going? Back to town. I'm finished with this business. Oh, you're finished, are you? Well, then I should have taken care of your boyfriend after all, huh? smartened you up some. You didn't really think I'd let you go, did you? And if you ran, you must have known I'd come after you, didn't you? Keep a close eye on her and make sure she doesn't go anywhere. Get all there? All right, let's get them out and get them in the way. All right, line up against the wall. <laughs> We're going for a little ride. I have to pick him up.
you do that to me? My brother's in there. Oh, everything you said, you're a liar! because I plan to eat all this by myself. Oh, oh you know, we all get a share Give here. Your mother... I'll have a big piece right here on the what end. Is with that big flower on it. All right. Give me a flower. I flowers. get a flower. There we go. <laughs> all right. Oh, that big enough for you? Fancy green yeah, that's... Stuff. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, Come that. on. Put it here. Put it here. Wow, look at that. Oh, God. Look at that. Mine. You going to town? Well, I, I thought I might drop by the jail. Well, he thinks he'll see you? I don't know. But she's gonna need a good lawyer. Well, she'll have the best there is. Scrawny hair, long ears, short legs, but I don't care. You're still more fair. Let me get one of these, then. A bear. You're a Missouri. That's pretty good, Jughead. You want one? Just a minute. I'll get it for you. Just a poor old man. I ain't got nothing but a dent fry pan and a two dollar watch and a stupid jackass. You wouldn't want to hurt a pitiful old man, would you? You. you got me good. Uh, 
I done told them twice, Jughead. Barkley. Barkley? One of Tom Barkley's sons, remember? Tom Barkley? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. I caught up with the feller that shot him. Killed him, didn't I? Uh, that's right. Uh, would you mind? Oh, well. Yeah? Well, now there sure is a surprise. How have you been? Well, I can't complain. I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> Say, tell me something. How is that pretty mother of yours and that little button-nosed, black-haired sister? Well, now, Audra is a blonde, and uh, they're both fine. Oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you got to forgive me. I forget things. Well, we don't. And the family would never forgive me if I forgot to ask you back to the house for a few days. Well, I ain't exactly shined up for a visitor. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. I dress all poor mouth for the trail. That's so hold-up men won't be wasting their time. I Besides, see. that fella that killed your daddy put a slug in my arm. My shooting arm. Kind of slowed me down on defense. Oh, no, I'm sorry to hear that. It's all right. I learned to scratch with the other hand. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, are you going to uh, join me going back to the house, or uh, it'll get me in an awful lot of trouble? Well, I wouldn't want to get you in any trouble. <laughs> that seemed to me, uh, handy. I heard some shooting as I was riding up. Oh, a couple of young fellers. They tried to dry ghost me. What they wanted to get out of me, I don't know. Well, Andy, they probably thought you were working for us. Right now, around here, the Barkley brand is not much better than a target. Oh, dear. Yeah. So, senor, we have no choice. We must leave like the others. All right, Pedro. After all, you're hired to harvest, not to get shot at. My wife, my children. Without me, they are lost. They have no one else, senor. We will return when you tell us it is safe. I understand. Here, this will help you on your journey. Oh, gracias. Muchas gracias. Vaya con Dios, amigo. Adios. Well, we're having beefsteak, friolis, potatoes, and cornbread for lunch. Be there when the bell rings or you'll eat it cold. Well, you know, Mother only left at 9 o'clock this morning, but I miss her already. Well, just don't forget, I'm running the house this week. Uh-huh. Well, in that case, I'll have ham and eggs for lunch. <gasps> Guess who I brought with me? Fifty harvest hands, I hope. Oh, no, no luck there. Come on in. Mr. Random! <laughs> Andy Random, why, you old rascal, this yeah. is a surprise. Come in, come well. in. It's good to see you. <laughs> Nick, how long has it been? Oh, about six years, I think. Well, now, what have you been up to? Where have you been? Oh, around and about, chasing a dollar here and there. Of course, a wrangler with one bad arm ain't an overwhelming demand. And I'm working sheep now. You know them little critters kind of cute once you get used to them. <laughs> I'm on the way south right now. I got a little teensy grub steak. I'm going to buy in on a sheep's bread. Hey, now, wait a minute. Where is that pretty mother of yours? 
Well, she's uh, gone to Denver, visit her sister. Oh, more's a pity. I did want to smile on her. Well, she sure will be sorry she missed you, Hattie. Yeah. I'll get some tea. Tea? Uh, I think, Audra, that uh, Handy would like something a little more uh, substantial. Audra, just set another place for lunch. Sit down, Handy. Well, thank you. Thank Sherry, you. brandy, whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll start with the whiskey. <laughs> And to think I thought there for a minute a while back I was riding into unneighborly territory. Oh? Yeah. Andy came through one of the groves and Craddock took a shot at him. Fine neighbors you got there. Uh, oranges are good, but they ain't that good. But that was. <laughs> well, I apologize for that, Handy. But actually, those are our oranges. Your are. Well, why wasn't you shooting at me instead of them young'uns? Well, because Craddock believes the land belongs to him. You see, Handy, the divider between our property and his is Green Creek. Now, a little while ago, we had a flash flood, and it changed the course of the creek. It cut way into our property, put a big chunk of our groves on his side of the divider. Ever since then, he's claimed it was an act of God, and now the land belongs to him. He and his men have been taking pot shots at everyone riding through. Scared off half our harvest hands. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, we've taken it to court. Case comes up in about six weeks. Six weeks? Well, like them oranges is plumb ready to be pulled right now. Yeah, we know. No, oh, excuse me. <laughs> what are they worth? About $5,000. $5,000? And that's really the least of our problems. Craddock is strictly a cattle man. Now, the minute he harvests those oranges, he's going to go in there and cut down those trees and turn the land back to pasture. He spent years cultivating just to prove we could grow oranges here. Well, I pondered long enough. I got a simple and easy solution to the whole matter. <laughs> What's that? Mount up right over there and teach him some shotgun manners. Now, now, wait a minute, Andy. That's the last thing we need around here, range war. Well, it appears to me you've already got one. Now, they've fired at me going through them orange groves. But I give them what for. <laughs> what do you mean? You didn't hit him yet. <laughs> well, it wasn't more than 40 foot away. Uh, well, look, Eddie, we're going to have lunch in a couple of minutes. Maybe you'd like to wash up. Wash up? Oh, wash up. Yes, well, sure, sure. As a matter of fact, that orange juice makes your fingers stick together. <laughs> Is that room still upstairs where it used to be? Third door on the right. Well, I'll see you soon. You're a good provider. <clears throat> it's too bad that had to happen. Up to now, this thing has been bloodless. Did you ever think for a minute it wouldn't happen? It'll have to be reported. Nick, you better drop in and see the sheriff while you're in town. Oh, so he can take his usual firm stand, huh? Straddling the fence. Well, how'd it go? Well, the word's out. Working for the Barclays is a short career. Oh. Well, uh, you two boys better go into lunch. Uh, tell Audra I'll eat in town. Coward. Yeah. No harvest hands, huh? No, but if saddle sores could pick oranges, we'd be out of the woods. <laughs> Don't look like you had much luck either. No, I didn't. Say, by the way, we have a house guest that you'll probably be interested to meet. And does he pick oranges? No, but he shoots at Craddock's. <laughs> Might be a step in the right direction. Who is he? He shot the man who killed father. Uh, Audra told me stories about him. <laughs> hey, I tell you, that little room up there is a wonder. Last time I was here, I couldn't figure out how you got that water to run uphill. Handy, here's the brother you haven't met. This is Heath. Handy Rampin. Wow. How do you do, young feller? Mighty nice to meet you. Lunch is ready. I've got work to do. I'll eat with the hands. Keith. Well, who put a cockle burr on his shirt there? Good afternoon, Nick. 
Fred, I'd like to report a shooting. I was just going to ride out to see you about that. Craddock's been here already, huh? Mm-hmm. He says one of your men peppered up two of his sons pretty bad. Fred, it wasn't one of our men. It was a guest of ours that accidentally walked on the grove and shot to defend himself. Mm -hmm. Craddock claimed he was your hired gun. Fred, it was handy random. Oh. Oh, now, come on. Why the sour look? Well, it riled some people that he shot that man in the back. When a killer is running away from you, it is the customary place to shoot him. Besides, you wouldn't say they were just a little bit riled up because they found out the reward was going to an outsider. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I'll fill out a report on it. You be sure to add to that report that Craddock fired first. A man has a right to post a no trespassing sign and back it up with a gun. Not when he posts someone else's property, friend. Right? Now, we've been through all this before. It'll all come out in court. Not until the crop is lost. It never occurred to you that maybe Craddock is right. I say he isn't. Now, Nick, you're asking me to be judge and jury, and I'm just not qualified to do that. Now, my sworn duty only covers keeping you all from killing each other until the case is heard. Well, you may have to go to work sooner than you think. Well, how's that? I'm going out to old man Craddock's. Well, you know I can't guarantee your safety. That's a thing that happened this morning in the Grove was very unfortunate. Hiring a gunfighter is always... Andy Random is not a gunfighter, and we did not hire him. I'd know a professional. He stalked my boys like a prairie wolf. Frank saw how you greeted him. I suppose he's a house guest? Yes, as a matter of fact, he is. You've had time to think of a better story than that. No, 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 wait a minute. We have a difference of opinion, Craddock. And that shooting this morning has nothing whatever to do with it, unless you'd like it to go on and build up into a great range war. That's already happened. Up to now, we've been shooting high. From now on, we aim dead center. Oh, now, that's very foolish, Craddock. Very foolish indeed. What exactly do you want? I want to talk. I want to talk about orange groves. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. If you want to come around here whining about his decisions, you're wasting your time. Nick Barkley, your family comes of honest stock. They're good people. I'm telling you that so you'll know I hate you all on a personal rather than on a moral basis. While you and yours were busily inheriting this valley, me and mine were busy coaxing potatoes out of a main marble field. You ever get down on your hands and knees and beg a potato to get fat? Did you ever get so mad you took a tree branch and beat an apple because it shriveled on a twig? No. You don't even know the taste of a pig's foot or a hen's neck. You've been raised on the fat of the hog wait, and the wait, breast wait, of the chicken. Hold it, hold it, Craddock, hold it. You're not the only man that managed to scrape out a ranch with his fingernails or eye teeth. We had just as many rocks on our land as you did, just as many tree stumps as you did. But there's another reason, the real reason. Like Frank here, came to call on Audra and got turned down. Anybody that's too good for my sons is too good for my bounty. Audra has a mind of her own. She's the only Barkley who ever set a welcome foot on my property. Let me tell you this. If I owe you a dollar, I'll follow you to Timbuktu to pay you. And I'll chase you twice as far if you overcharge me. My land is my land. And I wouldn't give you a rock off of it to kill a rattlesnake. Does that make my position clear? All right, let's simmer down. Let's simmer down a minute. I'll tell you what. We'll harvest the oranges, put the money into escrow. The one that wins the case gets the money. I've turned that offer down before. Now, after what your man did to my boys... I keep trying to tell you he was not our man. He just shoots my sons and lives in your house. He wasn't when he did. But he didn't, he is. We're not getting too far, are we? At least you aren't. You want this whole thing to build into a range war, don't you? I'm going to pick those oranges and chop down those trees and plant alfalfa. And if I find any Barclays on that property, I'll plant them too. better than a horse. Long on ears, short on legs, 
I don't know what I can be. You're a Missouri canary, but you can't sit in a tree. Mr. Oh, what? What? Well, oh, hey, <laughs> Miss Audrey. Oh, my God. Oh, well. Now, look here. Don't, you must never cat foot up on a fellow that way. Oh. I startled you. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> all right. I brought you a present. Huh? Present? For, for me? Mm hmm. Well, <laughs> present. Well, I don't believe I ever, I ever got a present off for me before. Well, go on, open it. No, 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 no. I want to save her for a minute there. <laughs> yeah, all righty. Here we go. Well, well, I spawned. What do you know about that? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, yes, that's just what I've been needing. Uh, a long piece of cloth. Oh, it's a muffler, Mr. Random. You, you put it around the top of your head during the winter time. It keeps away the snorts and oh, the sniffles. Uh, yeah, well, heavens, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> sure, there you go. Look at that. Hey, and it holds your hat on, too. Keeps it from blowing off. That's exactly what it does. <laughs> sure. Remember that chill you had when you were here before? Oh, I'll never forget it. Took me nigh to a month to get over it. You put me back together. You spoon-fed me the whole time. I've never forgotten that. <laughs> and remember when you left, you gave me a necklace made out of Arrowhead? I still have it. Oh, well. Well, you know. <laughs> uh, stay right there. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. See that gun there? That is the gun that killed the man that killed your daddy. <laughs> there, she's yours. Oh, that's Bargreaves. That's Bargreaves. That makes her... That makes her slip out of the holster just as slick as ice. And I want you to see something here. Look here. See that thong right there? Well, that holds the trigger back so the hammer don't catch you. And if you're a fanner, which I was, you file off the rat tail, let's it on the hammer there. Don't scratch your hand that way. The sights are gone. Oh, sure, sights are gone. You file off the sights. If you can't hit a man without aiming at him, you use a shotgun or a rifle. Oh, that sounds want... very professional. <laughs> well, I learned that self-defense, you see. And I want your family to have this. Kind of a sentimental piece. I can't use it anywhere with this bad wrist anymore. Well, thank you, Mr. Random, but... Well, I really can't accept it. Well, Oh. Oh, well, I... Yes, I see. Yes, I see what you mean. You, you don't want to have her around to, to look at. But your kind offer is appreciated. You know, it's a sad state of affairs when a man my age ain't got nothing to offer except <laughs> a broke gun, broke wrist, bent frying pan, and a mud-colored jacket. <laughs> Name is Audrey. That uh, one brother of yours, not Heath. Heath is ill-mannered. Uh, well, he sure got it hard against me. I don't remember him. Of course, I do forget things. Dinner's at seven, Mr. Random. Dinner. Well, the only thing that'll keep me from dinner is a lot of money, a good horse, or a beautiful woman like you, Miss Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hush up. Can I talk to nobody but you? I gotta have some social life, Jughead. Keith Bartley, what's come over you? What do you mean? I think you owe us an explanation. For what? For your behavior toward Handy Random. Where'd you learn your manners? Well, the same place I learned a lot of other things. Well, I think you owe him an apology. What have you got against that poor old farmer? He's no farmer. That's not dirt on his hands, that's powder burns. He wouldn't know a yam from a carrot if it wasn't cooked and put on a plate in front of him. Handy Random is a friend of this family's, and as long as you're part of it, he's a friend of yours. I think I have the right to pick my own friends. Well, I was right about the sheriff. How'd you make out? Still straddling the fence. 
So I went over to Craddock's myself. And you're just lucky you didn't get your head blown off. Uh, did you get anywhere with him? Nope. Maybe if I went over to Craddock's. You stay off Craddock's land, Audra. Unfortunately, Andy Random's got us in quite a bit of trouble. Joe and Frank were pretty badly peppered. Peppered? Well, not that I'm saying it's Handy's fault. Well, I am plumb sorry that I caused you folks this trouble. Now, you didn't cause the trouble, Handy. You just caught up with it, that's all. Well, still and all, I feel responsible, but I got an ID. Now, how many of them Craddocks is there? Fifteen, maybe twenty. You give me. Five hundred dollars. And I will guarantee that starting tomorrow, you can pick all the oranges you want and nobody will bother And just how would you manage that? Powers of persuasion. I hope you're not serious. Now, look here. You pick them oranges right now or you can forget them. <laughs> you're going to pluck oranges, you're going to pluck credit. I don't know. Wait a minute, Andy, now. That's exactly what we don't want. They say you're trespassing, you say they's trespassing. Now, why ain't we got just as much right to shoot them as they got to shoot us? And I'll tell you another thing. You say you're going to go get harvest hands. Well, if and you do get them, which I dearly doubt, you're going to just send them out there to be shot by Craddocks? All right, now. Change your mind, I'll be around. But mark my words, before this is out, you're gonna need my services. See, it's up. <laughs> well, I figured he'd get around to that proposition sooner or later. Let's have it. What do you know about him that we don't? Well, what would you think of a man who makes his living following feuds? Starts them if they don't exist. Then sells his gun to the highest bidder. Where'd you run into him before? A couple of years ago, he was in the Lincoln County Wars. It didn't make much difference which side you were on. Both paid the same. $25 for signing up and... $25 for every saddle turned into the paymaster. The saddle was proof of death. But the paymaster never knew who the saddles belonged to. So you could face your enemy and kill him, or you could hang back and see all those beautiful unguarded backs of your friends. I take it you were in the fight also. Well, I was just a kid fighting for what I thought was right. I took my $25 and... Two days later, I got a bag full of carpet tacks and horseshoe nail heads. Handy comes running up to polish me off with a knife. I was able to take a gun butt to him, but it didn't help. What do you mean? Well, I made it up a ravine, and while I was trying to decide whether to live or die, he came to, stole my saddle, and turned it in for the money. Why didn't he recognize you? Well, he's old. And he's looked down that barrel at a lot of people besides me. How come you didn't mention this before? Well, how could I? You all were so fired up about him. That old man's a walking plague. And the sooner we get rid of him, the better. fingernails now. Oh, look what you done to my knife. I got enough jags in there for a hair comb. Well, we'll just heat her up. And we'll flatten her out like a pancake and we'll have a whittly comb that you can shave with. Hey, you know, Judge, you wouldn't look so bad, bare face, neither would I, for that matter. Then if a fella called us a bare face liar, he wouldn't be lying. <laughs> oh. Well, sir, that's good and hot. Hey, now, Jug, 
That young fella up there at the house, you know the youngin' with his lower lip stuck out and he's shining them rifles? Can't put him. Of course, he takes to me like a water moccasin dude to a toady frog, but there's no accounting for the tape. I do believe I've seen him summers before. Well, it'll come to me by and by. You know, you and me is gonna make some money, don't you? <laughs> We're gonna make her. <laughs> hey, now. Look at here. Jug? Jug, wouldn't them nails make a fine big hole in the feller? for supper. Well, I just tidying up my jackass. I'll go get washed up right away. Handy, I want a word with you. Bub them off her, bub them off her. Oh, believe me, you won't regret it. I would just admire like all outdoors working for you folks. Even though there is one who don't cotton to me. Handy, we've discussed it and we've decided that it would be better for everyone concerned if you just mounted up and rode out of here right now. Well, well, there's, there's your oranges. <laughs> what a waste. <laughs> you know, city fellas, they don't feel about crops the way you and me do. We're country, outdoors. I can tell you, are by them crinks around your eyes and that spit on your lip from the wind. And the way you wear your gun hung low. You ain't got the cut of a man who'd let somebody waltz off with his oranges. What do you expect us to do, Handy? Wait for some night where we can sneak up on them and shoot them in the head while they're asleep? No, we just post our own no trespassing signs. Then we light a little fire down there in the grove. When the critics come down to put her out, ping, ping, we just lay them out deader than mackerels and legal. Having you for a partner, Handy, is something like having a rattlesnake in your hip pocket. Oh. You got no reason to mean mouth me, boy. Handy. Now, it'd be much simpler if you just ride out. Now, here's a hundred dollars. I said five hundred. You don't have to do anything for this except ride out. Take it, Handy. Oh, Charity. That pure sticks in my craw. You better ride out, old man. You know, there's one thing worse than charity, and that's an uppity youngin. You always start a fight with a gun in your hand, do you, boy? Who do you? I'm a gunfighter. You've had your back up again me ever since we first met here this afternoon. Why? You drag out me once. Well, it appears like I didn't do a very good job. I can't put you. Maybe it's because I slammed your head with that gun butt. Lincoln County Wars. Lincoln County Wars, sure. Sure, that's it. Well, Sonny, you should have finished that job right then and there, or you should have killed me when you met me here, because that's what I aim to do to you. Fighting fair is going to be the end of you one day, because you're going to run across a man, sooner or later, who don't. Next time you see me with my back turned, you better kill me, because that's what I aim to do to you. Now, I'd like to apologize to each and every one of you. For what? For having to kill you if you ever step on Craddock land. You're working for Craddock? And not yet, but there's two sides to every question. Short on leg, I don't know what I can beg for you. You must worry, can Now listen, Junkhead. 
I want you to go ahead without me. I'll be with you shortly. You understand? Go. Go on. Go on. Get going. figure of a horse if I ever saw one. Is that a Tennessee walker or a Texas trotter? That looks like the jackass the old man was riding. Oh, ain't that old. And if you boys want to get any old, he's drop them irons right now. Drop them right now. All of it. All of it. Come on. All of it. All right, now mount up. Huh? Mount up. Oh, don't scare me, boys. I'm an old man, and I'll kill you. No, I'm happy-go-lucky, and I just come here for a genial chat, so you just take me to your boss, or I'll shoot you in the face. Now, get. and shot us. You crank? You here to collect some bullet holes? <laughs> boy, boy, get up, get up and get over there. Get, get it. As I can see you. Paul, you better tell these boys next time not to shoot at a man unless they mean to see him dead. I already have. Any reason why you shouldn't beat the next one? Oh, I got some pretty good reasons right here in these barrels. Little pieces of glass like the doc took out of my boys. No, oh, it's gravel this time. It Cuts down on my overhead. Did you know that double odd buckshot is up to a dime, a pound? You are a professional gunman. You won't leave here alive. There are three of us and you've only got two shots. Only take one for you. But I don't want to shoot you. I may want to work for you. Price being right, natural. Say out what you're saying. Well, you got a feud going here. I specialize in them things. Now, the Barclays got certain points, you got certain points. For a price, I'll make your points, I'll point their points. What price? Well, on the reverse side, we was speaking of $500, but you add $100 to that, and I'll guarantee the Barclays don't step on your property. Why are you switching sides? I'm not, unless you come up with an extra 100 Satisfaction guaranteed. So they did pay you to shoot my boys? Oh, now, let's just say that they spread a soft bed, a fine table, and they do pour generous. Frank, you can get out the bottle of liquor. Now, what do I get for my money? Guarantee. The Barclays won't pick them oranges the way they want to. Won't stop you from chopping down them trees the way you want to. Guaranteed. Seems strange you switching sides. You being the one that got old Tom Barkley's killer. Oh, they got a new member of the family over there. I'll tangle with him. Here. Joe? Thank you, boy. You get some sugar to sweeten this man's drink? Well, that's nice, thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Well? No luck. The judge has gone fishing up at Crystal Lake for a week. Well, maybe go by the county attorney's office and check him out, see what he can do. No. No, if we're going to enjoin him from cutting down those trees, the injunction has to be signed by the judge. Oh. I think I'd better ride up there and try and find him. Good luck. I think I'd better go on past the depot, see if that barbed wire has come in. Then by the time I get home, I just might be hungry enough to eat Audra's cooking, if you can get that hungry. <laughs> Silas. Mr. Heath, you got back early. What did the judge say? 
Well, the judge has gone up to Crystal Lake, but Jared rode up to try and find him. Oh, I'll fetch you some lunch. Where's the grand hostess? Miss Audrey left about 10 minutes ago. Oh, where'd she go? She didn't say, just headed up the North Road. North, toward the Craddocks? I suppose she'd get there, she rode far enough, but she wouldn't. She might. Even if she did, the Craddocks wouldn't shoot Miss Audra. Yeah, but Handy Random is no Craddock. <laughs> Stop right there, Miss Barkley. Riding in here, you Barkleys are full of surprises, aren't you? I wanted to talk to you. A little late, isn't it? Like about two months? Frank, I have to warn you. About what? Handy Random. Is he working for you? In a manner of speaking, why? He's a killer, Mr. Craddock. Now, that's right strange. When he works for you, he's a guest. When he works for me, he's a killer. He never worked for us. You come out here to offer him more money? We never offered him any money. He said your family offered him $500. The offer came from him. My brothers threw him out. We were wrong about him. He's a killer. That's why I want him on my side instead of yours. Handy Random is on his own side. A pretty lady like you ought to have women's work to keep her busy. If you men would handle things better, I'd have time to. As it is, my dinner is probably ruined. You know, my place needs a woman's touch. I never had a daughter. My sons are good boys. They've never been in trouble. I'd take a bull whip to the first one of them and took a drink. Now, you were to take a liking to Frank here. I might be inclined to give that orange grove to the first one of my boys to present me with a grandchild. Mr. Craddock, I came here to stop something, not to start it. We're not talking about the same things. You want to talk about grandchildren, and I want to talk about oranges. Exactly. I'm sorry. I'm just not ready to get married. Frank, here's overdue. He's most 30. I don't beg. I'm just trying to find a solution. She's made it pretty clear I'm not it. Frank, I'm sorry. See Miss Audrey safely off the property. I never got no escort when they showed me the road. You just do as I say. Destroying that grove is wrong. My father knows what he's doing. Does he know what Handy Random's doing? You people brought that old man into this valley. We didn't. He just rode in. Don't you understand? His only purpose is to get one set of us mad at... mad enough that the other set hires him. Sides mean nothing to him. You're just saying that because we have him. Look, it's far enough. You can make it home safe by yourself from here. He got turned down once, and now you're returning the favor? In spades. Good day, Miss Barkley. You know better than to ride out here alone. Now, let's go. Look out! Say, Miss... Miss 
Chandra! Young fella? Say, I'm plumb sorry about that. That was a mistake. I... I didn't mean that at all. No, I'm real sorry. So, uh, come on out. Come on out now. I'm sorry. on a man with your gun out unless you mean to kill him. Miss Order, see what I mean? There's nothing to fear at all. I even fired the other barrel. Come on out. You got nothing to fear. He's got a chest full of gravel. He said gravel cut down on his overhead. I'm sorry, son. Joe, take your brother home. I'm going to find that old man. so I can see you. I've been shot a lot, but I don't believe I ever collected one quite like this one. I don't know what got into me. Turning on my old friends, the Barclays, like that. I reckon old Devil Grease has come in through my ear and sat down on my brain. <laughs> I always figured that I'd live forever. But... The trouble with his dying business, it makes you feel like a plum darn fool. I always hoped if and I did die, I'd be out of town at the time. Somebody'd have to come and tell me about it later. I guess it's something everybody has to do for himself. Right. <laughs> it's cold. This dying business. Cold. Would you? Get a, a blanket out, out of my gear, boy, please. Take my jacket.
Audrey, you didn't kill him. I don't think I did either. That old man's been dead for a long time. down by the creek. On which side? Our side. You should have left him for the buzzards. Uh, even the buzzards would do some consideration, don't you think? The Lord works in strange and wonderful ways. You were beholden to that old man for avenging a wrong done to your family. Now I'm beholden to you for the same thing. Mr. Craddock, you don't owe us anything. In some religions, nobody works for two weeks following the death of a member of the family. Picking oranges is work. What religion is that, Mr. Craddock? My religion. What are you driving at, Craddock? I thought you might pick those oranges and dispose of them. I'm not familiar with the market. We can do that, can't we? This is no admission. Those groves aren't mine. We'll let the court decide that. But if it should, fine for you. You'll owe us for the harvesting costs. Done. I'll have Joe remove the posted signs. Well, I guess there's no need for this injunction. We'll just take our chances in court. <laughs> 